Hello everyone and welcome to the second session of the lesson Types of Government and Democratic Government. So in the first video of this lesson, in the first session of this lesson, we discussed what is government? What are the functions of the government? Then we talked about the three different levels of government that is central level, central government, state government and the local self government. So these three levels working at three different levels, the national level, the state level and the local level. Then further we talked about the three uh, organs of the government that is legislature, executive and judiciary and we also talked about the parliament which is a legislative body. Further we move ahead, we moved ahead with the types of government where we read about uh, the different types of government that is monarchy, dictatorship, federal form and unitary form of government. Monarchy where king or queen is the head. Dictatorship where uh, one single individual or a small group of people has all the, all the powers. Unitary form of government is the one where there is only one government for the whole country and the federal form where the power is distributed between the center and the state. After these discussions, we talked about the most important section, the most important part of the lesson that is democracy. And uh, we read that democracy is the most powerful form of government today, which is formed by the people of that country. And we also read that, uh, I mean, we also read the beautiful description and the very apt description by Abraham Lincoln that democracy is uh, a form of government that is of the people, by the people and for the people. Now, in this session, we will be talking about the types of democracy, types of democratic forms of government, where we will cover parliamentary form of government and presidential form of government. Further, we will talk about universal adult franchise. Then we will discuss the salient features of democracy and we will also talk about public opinion. So let's get started. So let us first understand what are the types of democracy. So there are two types of democracy. One is direct democracy and the other is representative democracy. Right. So, what is direct democracy? Let us first understand that. So, in direct democracy, people make laws and policies by which they are governed. So, so the citizens are only making the policies and with the help of these policies, these laws, these rules, they are governing the entire country. But Children, a very important thing to keep in mind here is that direct democracy is suitable for a country which is which has a small population, right? So the perfect example of direct democracy is Switzerland, which is a uh, where the population is less. It's a small country with less people. So direct democracy is possible here. Then uh, moving on to the next type of democracy that is representative democracy. So obviously this kind of democracy is best suited for a vast country like our own country India. So let's understand this. So representative democracy is one in which elected 
representatives run the government and these representatives who who are electing these representatives of course the people the citizens of the country they are electing these people and they form the government right so in this type of government the leaders chosen by the citizens become members of a body and this body is called legislature so in the first video i discussed i explained you what is legislature it's one of the organs of the government and legislate what is the function of legislature to frame laws right so i hope now you can relate i mean with uh legislature so india is a good example of representative democracy because our india is a vast country next we move on to types of democratic forms of government so in a representative type of democracy we have two main forms of government so this these two forms are parliamentary form of government and presidential form of government so as the name indicates you must have got an idea so parliamentary form of government has two heads and who are these two heads the prime minister who is directly elected by the people as the member of parliament and the second head is the president who is indirectly elected so he is not the president of the country is not directly elected as in the case of the prime minister the prime minister is elected directly by the citizens right we cast our votes and the leader becomes the prime minister the leader of the winning party becomes the prime minister whereas on the other hand the president is elected by uh, uh he is elected through an electoral college made up of the elected representatives who are the members of parliament so it is uh, i mean in it is called indirect because the chosen representatives vote for him instead of the citizens of the country in the parliamentary form of government the executive is a part of the legislative branch the head of the state that is the country uh, is the president who is not the head of the government so the president becomes the head of the country but he is not the head of the government the head of the government is the prime minister who is the leader of the majority party and it is he who controls the executive so india follows this form of government the next form of government is presidential form of government where the legislature and executive these two organs are separate these two body these two are separate bodies the president chosen independently for a fixed tenure is not responsible to the parliament so this is something very very important to keep in mind the president is the real head of the country and it is he to who enjoys all powers he he is the most in presidential form of government uh, the president is more powerful the president is only the policy maker and the legislature is the law maker right so the president is the policy maker he is making the policies and the legislature is making the laws the executive legislature and judiciary these are all separate and of course the president is the most powerful one so i hope this much is clear to everyone and uh, in presidential form of government uh, the president uh, who is elected for a fixed term a fixed period of time he can only be removed through a, a difficult procedure which is called impeachment so the president can be removed through impeachment 
so i hope this much is clear to everyone now let's proceed further and talk about universal adult franchise so citizens who are 18 years of age or above can cast their vote for the representative of their choice so what does it mean the those citizens those the people of the country right those who are 18 years of age or above they can cast their vote and they can choose their representative right so this is uh, what we find in our own country india so here uh, in casting votes all citizens are treated equally all are equal whether uh, on the i mean there is no discrimination made on the basis of caste creed religion or economic condition and all are given the right to vote so this is what is called universal adult franchise now let us talk about the salient features of democracy so i hope children all of you must have understood what is democracy and the best way to remember it to keep in mind is by remembering the definition of democracy given by abraham lincoln that is for the people of the people and by the people so moving ahead let us now talk about salient features of democracy so political parties are disciplined and should work for national interest so the uh, the the political parties they should be disciplined they are they need to be disciplined and their sole motive should be to work for national interest and not for personal interest public opinion is again important for any democracy because uh, since the uh, since democracy is formed by people only so public opinion holds a very important place it paves the way for social and political change the government cannot ignore the rights of the people next people should be aware of their rights and duties so all the citizens must have a clear uh, rather a crystal clear uh, uh, awareness or uh, idea about the rights of his rights I mean the rights of the citizens as well as the duties of the citizens as rights and duties have been defined as the two faces of the same coin so uh, people must know their rights as well as their duties towards the country next the citizens should accept the decisions of the government so whatever decision is being taken by the government citizens must abide by those uh, rules and policies and finally the government should have the freedom to rule and the opposition should have the freedom to express their opinion so a large number of representatives are responsible for running a smooth democratic government and uh, of course uh, uh, the structure of democracy is based on liberty and equality so the government should have the freedom to rule the country and at the same time the opposition party also should have the freedom to express their opinion it should run in both the ways next we move ahead and uh, discuss the point participation so in a democracy representatives chosen by the people through election process run the government and election is, is is a formal and organized procedure to a uh, procedure of selecting someone for public office 
by vote. So election helps in keeping a check on the power exercised by the elected representatives. So elections are very important and election helps in keeping a check on the power which is exercised by the uh, representatives who have been elected by the citizens. So it is the duty of representatives to keep in mind the opinion of the people while taking decisions. So uh, all the decisions must be taken keeping in mind national interest that is uh, the welfare of the people. In our country elections are held after every five years and of course as I said just now all citizens of 18 years or above can cast their vote. They can uh, exercise their right to choose honest, devoted and sincere representatives. And participation grants people the power to bring about change. If the government is not performing well, if the government is not performing uh, for the development, for the betterment, for the progress of the country, they can be changed. The people can change the government. Uh, participation uh, grants people the power to bring about change if the government does not perform. So I hope this much is clear. And people participate by taking interest in the government and even by criticizing the government. So it's not that people do not have the power to criticize. In democracy, people have the right to voice out. They can speak if they find something, uh, I mean, uh, wrong with the government. If some policy, some decision is not uh, favorable for the citizens, the people, the citizens have the right to voice it out. Uh, the best example is uh, the people uh, is the case where people criticized severely uh, when there was a hike in the prices of petrol. There were heated debates on television and uh, about the impact of rising fuel prices. So some favored the government. Others pointed out the flaws and finally the government had to concede to the demands of the people. So uh, this shows that democracy is a form of government which is very fair and if people find something wrong they can definitely voice out. Next is public opinion. So let us first understand what is public opinion. It's the aggregate, it's the, it's the sum, the total of individual views and beliefs prevalent among the adult residents. So those, I mean the, the citizens who are uh, the adults, that is 18 years and above, they can voice out. This is what public opinion is. And there are several ways in which public opinion is expressed, uh, like uh, dharnas, rallies, strikes, signature campaigns, etc. All these are the ways of expressing public opinion. So now, uh, in case study, we will talk about the anti-apartheid movement, which uh, took place in uh, in South Africa. So this was, uh, I mean, this movement is a very good example of, uh, I mean, the, the participation of the citizens, right? So uh, this is the, the picture of Nelson Mandela and uh, this anti-apartheid movement was led by him. It is by Nelson Mandela, who was the leader of the African National Congress. So, anti-apartheid movement was launched by the black population of South Africa to fight against discrimination. So, this discrimination was between the blacks and the whites, right? The white ruled South Africa uh, for a long time, that is between the years 1948 and 1994, so a long time span. Non-white people were not treated equally by the white people. They had 
separate schools, separate public facilities, and they were denied, the blacks were denied uh, the basic human and political rights. They were uh, treated almost like untouchables in their own land, right, in their own uh, country, South Africa, by the whites of South Africa. And therefore, this movement has been named apartheid, which means apartness or difference in African language. So the movement was led by Nelson Mandela, who was the leader of African National Congress. And uh, he, for this, he was sent to, for this, for leading this movement, he was sent uh, to prison for 27 years by the South African government. In 1994, the blacks finally got their freedom and they got their right to form their own government and their, uh, I mean, their first, uh, they, 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 it was the first time in 1994 that they voted freely and uh, this election was won by Nelson Mandela. He formed the first mixed race government, I repeat, first mixed race government of South Africa where the blacks and the whites had equal rights under the law. So this is, an, this is a very good example of, uh, I mean, awareness of the people and uh, this movement is a way of participating in the government. So I hope the lesson is clear to everyone. So read the lesson carefully and we'll meet again in the next session. So thank you so much.